fishing ring for lubrication in steam turbines. What is the ideal and recommended level of submersion in oil for them? Operate at maximum efficiency? Is there a standard or some norm? Some magic number? What is the acceptance criteria regarding the circularity of these rings? Today's topic will certainly not make sense to many here. It is addressed to colleagues, mainly from the process industries, including mainly petrochemicals and other industries where they are applied, so-called single-stage turbines for drives. But calm down, for you, which is used to larger turbines in the energy generation part. I recommend watching until the end of this video and discovering a little more about this subject too, especially because today's concept, it can be applied to other equipment in your industrial park. So let's go to get everyone on the same page. What is the fisherman's ring? Before starting, the fisherman's ring is a mechanical element, a device or a part, whatever you want to call it, used to provide lubrication of rotating equipment bearings. But let's talk about your application. In low power, single stage steam turbines, but as I said, also, can be applied to other machines, pumps and other equipment. Leave here in the comments where you have already seen where you apply it in your company. Before continuing, let me give you a message here. That from the 15th, now this May, we will open new classes for our digital steam turbine training. So, for anyone interested, stay tuned on our networks. If you haven't pre-registered yet, you still have time. I'll leave the link here in the description of this video. Register there, pre-register and as soon as sales are released, you will be notified. There will even be special conditions for the first people who purchase. May 15th, okay? So take note of this next opportunity and come with us for our training. Conceptually speaking, it is a really narrow ring with a small radial thickness and a diameter significantly larger than the diameter of the axis region and the bearing or bearing where it will be applied and it operates suspended, loose and immersed in a certain level of oil. Thus, under the effect of gravity, the lower surface of it is immersed in oil and literally it fishes the oil through a fraction of the shaft rotation. It transfers this oil to transform it into a thin film between the shaft and the bearing, thus establishing lubrication. Therefore, pump independent lubrication or electrical systems called autonomous lubrication. As I said at the beginning of this video, for those who are used to turbines of higher powers 50, 100 million, 150,000, 200 megawatts and above. You may find this quite archaic, but it still is. But it is still widely applied in drive turbines. It is worth highlighting that even though it is carefully designed and manufactured, it is installed. The oil fishing ring. It is an item of risky application and questionable efficiency. Hence many end users. They change the design of older turbines with fisherman lubrication. For so-called forced lubrication through the installation and adaptation of a pump for mechanical oil pumping. It is estimated around the world that half of the bearing boxes of oil lubricated industrial pumps are equipped with this type of ring, that fisherman's ring. My goal with this video is not to talk in detail about the functioning of this ring because it is quite simple, but rather talk about a crucial detail about them when applied. What should be the ideal and recommended submersion level for them to operate at maximum efficiency? Is there a standard? Any specific standards? Some magic number? That's exactly where I'm going to explore in some applications. These oil fisher rings, they barely come into contact with oil and in others, they work exaggeratedly submerged. But why is understanding more about this important? When we are talking about small drive turbines, small single stage turbines with 150 or 200 kilowatts of power, we can have, including those that operate with a bearing instead of a plain bearing, the one coated with the famous Babbitt. We've already talked a lot here, including I'm going to leave the card. Here is the complete playlist for you to check out the topic about bearings. Just remembering, so as not to confuse the axial bearing with the radial bearing. I say this because there are still low power turbines, which operate with Babbitt plane bearings, fulfilling the radial function and the bearing fulfilling the axial function. That's right. It is exclusive to low power, low speed, shallow turbines. It is exactly in these cases where rings are usually applied. Fishermen for lubrication. Remembering that this here is the summarized version of this video about this content. And in our training we will leave the full version. Along with the other subjects of our training on steam turbines. 
legal, the operating limitation of these rings is given. As they present considerable oscillation at high speeds, it is quite common for these machines, these turbines in the bearing box. It has ducts to cool the oil. Refrigeration in this case, it only aims to maintain the oil viscosity within an acceptable value. Lubrication regimes based on lubrication of this type. From a fisherman's perspective, it is very similar to hydrodynamic lubrication, which, as we have already said here, is established by progressive phases. Depending on the increase in shaft rotation, from lubrication, mixed limit, until the establishment of the complete oil film at high speeds. Okay, but let's get to the focus of this video here. What should be the ideal immersion depth of the fishing ring in the oil? In order not to remain informal, let's get to the facts. The API 610 standard in its 8th edition required a submersion of 0.12 to 0.25, or 3 mm to 6.4 mm, but this has been removed from this standard. In its 9th edition precisely for the reason of enabling very small margin for the turbine or pump to work, and if checked correctly, it is simply not even transporting oil. And it is exactly in this sense that we will highlight in this video, which are nothing more than those fixed rings that rotate together, with the turbine shaft, as in front of them is larger than the shaft, one end. It will always be submerged in oil. It is the equivalent of 9.5 millimeters based on the minimum line. Previously established lubrication delivery schedule. We can see that the delivery of oil from the deflector disc was insufficient beyond about 2,100 revolutions per minute. The material of the fisherman's ring is non-metallic. It worked slower, delivering less oil than the brass ring, but it is more stable in a higher speed range. So it suggests that this is a better choice for lubricating bearings in high-speed operation. Around 3,600 revolutions per minute or higher, provided that the minimum requirements oil supply can be met. The oil ring, in turn, is made of bronze. It works faster than non-metallic oil ring for a given shaft speed, which means providing enough oil over a wider speed range. However, it was more unstable and at a slower speed. Both oil ring materials, they can provide sufficient quantity of oil over a wide range of submersion and rotation. Leave your review of it here. Or comment or tell us a little about your experience with rings. Steam turbine fishermen. I'll stay here. To the next. A hug. I went.